Good morning, everyone. Or it's already eleven in, in it's twelve in Germany now. So uh, I, yeah, good tag and uh, and herzlich willkommen and uh, good morning and uh, you are welcome. So we are now today for the uh, talk of uh, Professor Dafi. He's a professor at University. Mohammed VI Polytechnic in, in uh, Morocco. It's uh, situated in uh, uh, not far from Marrakesh in, in Ben Grier, in a place where uh, there is also the Institute for Solar Energy. He's uh, working, he's a geologist, very much uh, concerned about, uh, about materials, raw material in Morocco, resources. And he, he, uh, he is graduated from Ecole Nationale Supérieure des Mines de Rabat. It's very well known. And uh, University Qadi Iyad as well. He also got uh, a certificate. So he visited or he was enrolled in Colorado School of Mine. And he got certificate uh, regarding phosphate mining. Master from the... HHEC Paris in geopolitics and geoeconomic of emerging Africa. He has long standing interest in diverse technical expertise in mining sectors. He visited and worked in several countries. He also served in many places and he delivered lectures, highly engaged in geological science, as I said, and at professional uh, at uh, UMCs and other places. He's recognized by several international and national organizations. He's certified professional geologist uh, at the American Institute of Professional Ge uh, Geology. Uh, so there are uh, many qualifications. You can visit our webpage, you can visit our uh, uh, Instagram, uh, you can visit uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, you find a lot of information what we injected there about uh, Professor uh, Daffy. He is a regular member of the European uh, Geoscience Union and he is licensed, licensed person by Moroccan Ministry of Energy. So he is an expert, in, in, in one word he is the expert. In Morocco for the geology and everything. Geology is very important and uh, maybe at the end I will say some more in Arabic but uh, let's give him the uh, the floor to talk to, to talk about where he is working himself and he, his, his topic. Thank you uh, for coming today to give this talk to Professor Youssef Tafi. Thank you for being a member of the uh, uh, virtual uh, learning university and I just want to say to audience that you, you, you are going to give talks, uh, lectures, syllabus, so course in, the, in this virtual learning uh, university for free. Thank you very much. We are uh, a non-profit organization to give talk to, uh, to help students and not only to, to help them to, to in talk but also if they have a question, we will have in our web page a place where it's called the, the talking to experts. So anytime they can ask for any questions regarding science and technique, etc. Okay, I will leave the uh, the, uh, the the system to to give you the the floor. Thank you very much, and go ahead. Thank you very the much. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nawi. So I will try to share my screen. Can you see my screen, please? Yes. Okay, good. So good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I hope uh, that you are doing well in this moment of uncertainty and that God protects you and your family. So I'm very happy to be with you this morning to talk and share with you the history of geology and geological exploration. But I would like to thank Professor Nawi and congr congratulate him for his efforts and his energy and nationalism. He is a man of value uh, who puts his knowledge at the disposal of the society and it's, it is very appreciated. 
So I would like also to thank my colleagues and friends of VLU for their efforts and the opportunity they gave me to share my experience around the geology. So as Mr. Nawi said, so my name is uh, Yusuf Dafi, I'm a geologist engineer. At uh, the beginning of my career, I worked for the managing group company in uh, Morocco, which uh, extra ex extract uh, the fluorite in the Hammam mine. And uh, on 2006, I joined OCP exactly in Yusufia city, where I was in charge of geology department. And since three years ago, I joined the EM6P, where I take a charge of management of the AMTTPA, which means the Accelerated Mining Technology Transfer Platform for Africa. And where we work with the, a great team on six programs. The first one is around the artisanal and small mining scale, and where we have currently uh, uh, several projects in Morocco, and also we have we are asked to work with some brothers in uh, in uh, Africa, and also we have a second program which uh, which is around the talent factory, and uh, the third one it's around the preservation of mining heritage, because as you know that in Morocco we live in what we geologists call the uh, geologist paradise. And we're trying now to uh, valorize this, this heritage. And we have also the living lab, experimental mine, and currently we manage uh, the first living lab in Africa, which call it Ben Gurir um, Experimental Mine. And we try currently to create another in Senegal and another around the gold and a third one around the bauxite in, in Guinea. The fourth, the, the fifth uh, program, it's around the mining consortium. We're trying to, uh, to have the mining operator in Africa to, uh, in order to, to work together uh, on some challenges, on, on uh, some mining challenges. And the last one is the expertise and consulting. Here we have to try, we're trying to have uh, uh, a group of experts, African experts, to work together in some particular, uh, some, uh, uh, particular uh, challenges in mining industry. So I would like to remind you some rules uh, for the smooth running of this conference that I want it will be uh, interactive. And uh, you make sure that your microphone is switched off. And if you want to ask a question you, or share a comment, you have to use the rise, rise hand. Uh, Mr. Salim, he will help me on that. Of course, you can cut me off if you uh, see that I speak Chinese because this is a geology and so a lot of uh, many, many people don't understand some technical words. And so you, you should know that's the important thing for me is to understand the information that I will share with you. Okay, so uh, feel free to use the language that suits you to speak with me. Il pourra être français. And the uh, Arabia Aidan, and also in English if you want. <coughs> so, uh, Professor Nawi asked me uh, yesterday to uh, uh, to make a quick presentation of my syllabus of the course that I will have the honor to lead very soon. And the syllabus of my course it will be around the strategic raw materials for renewable energy. And as you know, the shift to low carbon energy system will impl imply massive changes in the raw materials requirement due to the deployment of the technologies, for example, rare, rare earth elements such as uh, neodymium, dysprosium, and uh, paracidimium uh, are key ingredients of, of permanent magnets used in high performance with wind turbines. And we have also borates, gallium, germanium, andium, and silicon metals are, which are needed in a solar photovoltaic and robotics are, and also the digital technology. We take also the example of batteries employ, which employ some materials such as cobalt and natural graphite, which are also required in 3D printing and digital technology. We have also platinum, which is used as a catalyst, catalyst in fuel cells and in digital applications, for example, for hard disk drives. Overall, the renewable energy sector requires many raw materials ranging from very high to low supply risk. Uh, the course, uh, my course will focus on the importance of these materials in the technological development of renewable energy. 
its resources and reserves, production, demand, and supply. So the main uh, the main objective uh, or the, the entities will have fundamental understand of the my life cycle and will trying to talk about uh, this my life cycle during the my talk during my talk and also the main critical materials, their market analysis, the price and the price volatility, the supply from prim for, uh, for primary materials and the supply from secondary materials or what we call it, the recycling. And the PLOs, the program learning outcomes, uh, will be around three points. An ability at the end of the, my course, the, the agencies will have an ability to develop and conduct appropriate experimentation, analysis and interpret data and use scientific judgment to draw conclusions. The second point, this is also very important, an ability to acquire and apply new knowledge as needed using appropriate learning strategies. And at the, at the last and not the least, <clears throat> at the least and not last, so an ability to understand the impact of strategic raw materials in societal and environmental contexts and demonstrate the knowledge and need for sustainable development. Let's move now to the talk. So the presentation will be uh, organized around four points. The first one is introduction, where we will see together some definition. And uh, after we will see the phosphatogenesis or the genesis of phosphite or origin of phosphorite. And we will see together the main, the criteria of the main uh, Moroccan phosphate deposits. And at the end, we will take uh, two slides to define the, the to, to give you the, the, the standard definition of uh, mineral resources and the reserves. Let's go. My first question is what is geology? In order to know uh, your background around the geology. So you can use right hand, raise hand. I have need two answers. What is geology? This is a question for non geologists, please. But Salim, because I don't see the uh, the screen of Zoom, if you can help uh, help me for the person who they raise hand. Yes, I'm with you, uh, checking everything. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go, guys. <laughs> Anyone who raise hand? Okay, let's go. The geology it's come from ancient Greek, which means G Earth. And logia, or this is a study of the stone. So is the science which deal with the physical structure and substance of the earth, their history, the processes which act on them and the future of evolution. So the geologist is the scientist who studies the solid, liquid, and gaseous matter that constitutes the earth and other terrestrial planets, as well as the processes that shape them. So the geologists usually study geology out of backgrounds in physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, and we can define some discipl disciplines in, uh, under the umbrella of geology in general. And we can find geochemistry. This is the application of chemistry in geology to understand the components of the rocks and the minerals. We have geophysics, which is the methods that we, and direct methods that we use in the exploration, in geological exploration. Paleontology, this is the study of fossils. Petro petrology, the study of petroleum and the gas. The metallogeny, which is my specialty, and this is the genesis of the metals. And hydrogeology, the study of underground, uh, underground water. Okay, so let's move to the, the definition of the mine. Are there anyone who can ask, uh, ask us the definition of the mine? What is mine? Anyone, anyone of you can define what is mine? Okay, let's go. The, the mine is a large excavation made in the earth from which the, to extract metallic ore, like coal, precious stone, salt, or other metals. And we have two kinds of mines, the open pit that we can see in the picture in your right. We have here the copper mine in Chile, which is extracted currently by Kudilku and the uh, phosphate uh, mines, uh, which are his, uh, in Morocco. The second type is the underground mine, when we have to extract 
the, the metals in the underground in the underground sometimes you can go until a hundred meter in deep okay so what is the my life cycle the my life cycle it's the uh, the mind uh, also the mind is like any creature in this the life you should know that it has a beginning and the end this is called this is called the mind life cycle with the integrated uh, development of the society we started to talk about the sustainability vision of the mind even if the mind contains the existable substance and the, this cycle this my life cycle start by the exploration the exploration geological exploration uh, until the post closure we passed by design and development the construction of the infrastructure of the mind the production of the ore and the close the clo closer closing of the mind and after we have to manage the post closing and by using the the, the pillar of sustainability which uh, which are uh, social environmental and economic let's move now to the different kinds or type of the phosphate deposits so the various phosphate minerals present in the, the in phosphate rock have diverse origin and chemical and physical properties so the phosphorus content of our grad we can call it the grad of phosphate rocks is commonly reported as phosphorus pentoxide p2o5 the principal phosphates minerals in uh, pr or phosphate rock are calcium phosphates mainly apatite pure fluor apatite contains something like 42 percent p2o5 and uh, the mineral what we call francolite look we have three uh, major types of phosphate resources are being uh, mined currently in the world the first and the biggest one is sedimentary marine phosphate deposits the igneous phosphate deposits and the biogenic or we can call it also the guano birds or island deposits so i give you here uh, some uh, some different definition that's come from bretters and uh, gear in 1994 which said that the term of phosphate rock refers to rocks containing phosphates minerals usually apatite which can be commercially exploited either directly or after processing for commercial application in the next slide i show here the map you can see the dots green red and blue which uh, which mentioned the location of the mine of the phosphate mines uh, around the world and as you can see that that's approximately 70, 75 percent of the world's phosphate resources are one from sedimentary marine phosphate rock deposits and we have some 15 to 20 percent from igneous and the weathered deposits and only one to two percent here that we can find here in the red color uh, one to two percent from biogenic resources largely birds and the bad uh, guano accumulation we all don't know uh, to understand more uh, each each kind of the phosphates and we start by guano guano deposits so the igneous this is igneous and resist alkali rocks uh, particularly carbonatite complex and the associated contact metamorphic rocks it provides about 15 to 20 percent of the world phosphate usually a fluorapatite and this kind of, uh, of, uh, of deposits are formed from alkaline igneous rocks such as nephelinic cyanide carbonatite and sand sand associated so the phosphate is in the this case contained within magmatic apatite monazite or other rear earth rear earth phosphates and this 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 deposits or this igneous phosphate rock concentrates are concentrates are produced uh, from uh, deposits that are mainly exploited in russia the example of the the, the picture that i give in your right in hibini deposits and also we can find some mines in brazil finland and uh, in zimbabwe so the igneous phosphates ores are often low in grad in a rock less than five percent p2o5 but can be upgraded to high grad product by using gravimetry for example from and we go from five five percent uh, to 35 percent or over than 40 percent p2o5 because there's there are some just some crystal i can show you here i have uh, an example i don't know if you can see this kind i have this uh, this mineral this is apatite this is the, but this is that's not come from russia this is a moroccan one 
so where I, I check from, from Emilchin and I will talk about that earlier in my slides. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> let's move now to the, the, the second kind of the phosphates. This is a guano deposits. And these are old and or fossil deposits of bird and bat ex excreta. And the guano deposits from birds are not mostly common, commonly found on ocean islands especially abundant like, uh, like some South Pacific islands. And, this for, and, and the guano deposits form uh, from bats are founded in a large cave system. So and you can found it in the cave like, uh, like this, and like this also. So accumulation of birds and mammals excrements have also provided important source of phosphate rock. And this kind of deposits on small ocean islands, for example, we can find it in Nauru, and Christmas Island were, were once major source of phosphate, but are now declining in importance or have uh, seized production. At this loca localities, bird excrement has formed th th thick accumulation of calcium phosphate or guano due to the reaction, uh, reaction of the organic waste with the, the with the underlying limestone rocks. Let's move now to the, the, the third one, which is the sedimentary deposits. So the sedimentary marine phosphate deposits occur on every continent and range in age from Precambrian to recent. And we have currently the Volga River, which, uh, which bring some 6,000 ton each year into the Caspian Sea. And about 80% of phosphate rock used commercially uh, is obtained from marine sedimentary deposits, what we can call it also phosphorites. And phosphorite beds consist of grains, pellets, or fragments, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, <clears throat> so this deposit typically show extensive reworking, secondary enrichment, and replacement shallow ocean are uh, areas and, uh, and continental shells commonly have uh, Thick accumulation of phosphorus rich organic debris. Let's, uh, let's see now some, some, uh, some, some types of sedimentary phosphates. And we will start by the first one, which we call it phosphate noodles. These are spherical, as you can see in the picture, spherical concentration that are randomly distributed along the floor of continental shelves. Most phosphorite grains are sand sized, although particles uh, greater than two millimeters may be, may be present. And this, uh, this large grain referred to as nodule. As you can see, look, uh, there are the nodule which we extract here in Nigeria uh, and can range, range up to several tens to of centimeters in size, that we can see here. The second one is the bioclastic phosphates or bone beds. The bone beds are bedded phosphates deposits that contain concentrations of small skeletal, skeletal particles and corpololites. Some, some, also, some also contain invertebrate fossils uh, like uh, brachiopod and, uh, and become more enriched in P2O5. So bioclastic phosphates can also be segmented by phosphate minerals is what we can see here. So there we have the phosphates which cement the, 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 the minerals. And here we have the different layers that come from Morocco. So the different layers of phosphate, here we will talk about layer four, layer three, and layer two, okay? The third one is phosphatization. This is another phenomenon to have the sedimentary phosphate. And phosphatization is a type of prayer the genetic process. It occurs when fluids that are uh, rich in phosphates are leached from guano, okay? Then concentrated and reprecipitated repre in limestone. And we have this, the case of this geological uh, thin section when we can see this phosphatization of the grains. Let's move now to the mineralogy and mineral composition of the phosphorite deposits. So uh, just for your information that the mineralogy of phosphate deposit is very complex. So we're trying now just to, to have some uh, underlying, underlying uh, information about this, uh, this, this mineralogy. And the mineral composition of phosphorite deposits is determined by the phosphate, which is a composite chemical compound of calcium phosphate, calcium fluoride, and calcium carbonates. And phosphate minerals, 
uh, occurring in the primary environment include fluoro apatite, uh, which is found mainly in igneous and metamorphic environments, for example, in carbonatite and the mica peroxonites, typically in, crystal, uh, in, in crypto crystalline masses with the grain size less than one micrometer, referred to uh, as what we call in silica. The second one is uh, carbonates apatite, or we can call it also carbonate hydroxide apatite, which is found mainly on islands and in caves uh, as a part of bird and bat excrements, what we call in, what I call already guano. The third one is hydroxyl apatite, which is found in igneous or metamorphic environment, but also, also in uh, biogenic deposits, for example, bun, bun deposits. And the last one is froncolite, uh, froncolite complex. This, uh, this complex of carbonate substituted apatite is founded mainly in marine environments, which is often uh, dissolved from vertebrates, bone, bones, and the teeth. So here I show some, uh, some uh, minerals that contain the phosphorus. Let's move now to the genesis of, of the phosphorus. So I'm very sorry, I'm very, I apologize because I put this uh, slide at last minute, so I didn't have time to, to translate it. It is a summary of uh, the process of genesis of the deposits, and it is valid for any type of deposits or minerals concentration. So the first step is the source, source of the element which has the economical interest. And there, then we have the natural extraction of this element, then the transfer or transport of the elements. And after we have the accumulation of the this element and the preservation. So trying to remember this process because we were applied the, that for to understand how the phosphate or sedimentary phosphate is formed or, or uh, formed and why we have it currently. So we will work together. If you want, please uh, help me, please, and trying to be interactive because I want that you understand this process uh, and be the ambassador of the phosphate gate to, to explain uh, for your colleagues and friends this process. So trying to be interactive, please. So we we'll work together to build the, the genesis model uh, of the, the phosphate deposit. So I will be sure that you will, you will not forget it, okay? So we start with the, the field observation and we have, and I ask if you have ever seen the, composi the, 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 the composition of the phosphates uh, or never. So that, does this look like uh, beach sand? Look like that, that, this grains here. So we will, we will, we will now go in deeper and, uh, and more de into more details. And we will look at this grains in into the two parts. So and as we can see here, we have a nucleus, which is in central part, and cortex, which we have here, some lamination. And, he is, and the phosphorus is concentrated in this lamination, OK? So, uh, <clears throat> so we're trying now to, I ask the question that is uh, trying to be attractive. Which natural process that can, in your point of view, uh, uh, which can give us this form of grains, it's a very important. You can explain in French, Arabic, English, as you want. There's no problem. Okay, we're waiting uh, for some uh, volunteers. Okay, anyone? <laughs> okay, so let's go. Uh, we were, well, now we were trying to apply the, the process of the genesis of the, the deposits. And we will start by source. The very important, the, the most important element here is the phosphorus, isn't it? So where, where the phosphorus can come? So we have three, three sources. Three, uh, three sources. The first one that can be the bones, okay? And uh, that can be also from leaching of rocks. And the third source, 
that can be also ocean by, from the, the, the bridge. So uh, in general, in general, when I ask this question to the, part, the participant physically, in my conference, the, the people tell me that, uh, that it is due to the, uh, the death of fish. Generally, when I ask, when I ask where, where this, the phosphates come, they say that it's come from the death of fish and dinosaurs. But by imagine, imagine how many dinosaurs and fish that we will have to kill to obtain this huge layer of phosphate. And please, you have ever seen an animal after its death transformed into the grains. It's why they, we have some other processes that can, that can be introduced in the, in the, the genesis of this uh, phosphate grains. So yeah, so I said that we have three, three resources. Now we, we pass to the extraction of this element. So I said already that from the continent, this is this extraction uh, come from the the lichen, the aquatic lichen or water lichen of this uh, rock. Generally, we talk about uh, Sinite Nephilimic, which is a volcano rock. And from the the bridge, the bridge is located at something like ten kilometers in deep in the in the oceans. So how we can bring this forest, this forest from this uh, this 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 deep to the continent do you have any idea about that no answer okay so uh, i can wait for three minutes uh, th three seconds to 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 have the answer for that the comment any comment So, okay, so in the, as I said, that the magma comes out with the temperature of something like 600 degrees C. And at the surface, we have the ambient temperature, okay? So with the difference in the density of hot water and cold water, we will have the phenomena of convection, okay? The convec convection. And now we have to transfer this mass to the continent. And what we can we will do? So I try to, to to draw that. Excuse me. Okay, so we have here that. Okay. Here we have the ocean, and here we have the magma. Okay, with magma with P. So I say that we have here some convection current, and as you know, that's the 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 earth stir around themselves. So it will create what we call in the Coriolis, convex, Coriolis current. So that's help us. And also by the, tecto the plant tectonics, we have the shape of the ocean, which will, will change it. So we ha we'll have the transfer of this mass from the ocean to the continent and what the American call the upwinding current, the upwinding down for us. So they, will, they, they ask, they, 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 they name, the this kind of phosphate, the upwinding phosphates. And this mass will be transferred to the continent and it will be trapped here. So we have the P that's come from continent that's, and another P that's come from the ocean. And we have here some animal activities, okay? And uh, thanks to God, that's the particularity of Morocco, which is located in this time in the, what we call in the uh, passive margin, and we have this uh, obstacle of what we call in the dishold, this the the dishold, the dishold, and that's help us to trap water here, which is which has a high concentration on 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 P, on phosphorus, and we have the regression of the water, water it will be trapped here, and by evaporation and the death of different elements, different animals. We have here the concentration of the P and the formation of what we call a gel. And by the bacterial activities, because we have here after regression, we have terrigen element like what that's come from the continents. They will boil this lamination around the grains and we will have our grains, which will be later be distributed in the Gulf. Okay, and to, to form this huge 
uh, uh, deposits that we have currently in Morocco and around the world. So uh, let's move now to this is this is a summary of what I have uh, just presented. So as we can see here, from stemming from the sedimentological, mineral, mineralogical, and the geochemical composition of uh, of the, the the phosphorites, the following conclusion can be drawn. Uh, regarding the condition of the phosphate accumulation, here we have some uh, scientific elements because uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the other uh, slides, I try to explain, simplify the, 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 the model. And here we have some scientific uh, elements. So we have primarily accumulation of phosphates particles. Uh, so pure and they providing a reducing condition together with the enrichment of organic matter. The second uh, secondary concentration Proceeded by wine wine and the reworking and the oxide oxic condition in a shallow water environment. So diagenetic little diagenetic lithification by carbonates, silicate and pyrite is characterized here by either reducing or oxidating environment. Uh, the third one is near surface in near surface phosphates rock uh, are generally affected by oxidation of, of uh, sulfides and or organic matter as a consequence of warm, humid, and water. The, the last one is the chemical composition of the phosphate rock, which is mainly determined by the reducing condition of primary accumulation. So here we have uh, the different uh, figures uh, that show this, uh, this process. And I will share with you this presentation if you want. So uh, we talk a lot about the phosphorus, but here we will have some uh, commercial presentation of the, the phosphate. So we have the phosphorus is, as you know, is an element that, element that is widely distributed in the nature and occurs. So together with the nitrogen and potassium as a primary constituent of the plant and animal life. So P plays a series of functions in the, the plant metabolism and is one of the essential nutrients required for plants growth and development. It has function of a, a structure, nurture, structure nurture, nurture in uh, macro elements, such as nucleic acid and energy transfer and metabolic, uh, met, metabolic pathway uh, of uh, biosynthesis. And the phosphate is not reduced in the plant, but remains in its highest Oxidized uh, form the, after after uh, uh, Marshner in 1993. So the use of the phosphate. So we have uh, something like five to five to six percent used in the feeding, and uh, from thirty to forty percent to make a fertilizer, and uh, from 65, 66 and to sixty to make a phosphoric acid. So I will share here. The, uh, the map that is produced by USGS, it says United States Geological Survey, which shows the geographic location of all of the phosphates deposits and occurrence around the world. Uh, and USGS has estimated for Morocco some resource around the 50 billion, billion tons. And we have in, currently in Morocco access to something like 72.5% of our world known phosphate resource. So in this figure, uh, shows the, this figure shows the, the evolution of the price of phosphates that was stable at uh, 40, $40. Okay, but, it's, it, but this price was multiplied by 10 between 2007 and 2009 because, the, the, because of the economic crisis during which the investors, uh, to protect their money, they invested in uh, uh, phosphates and fertilizers and uh, thereafter, it is the demand and the supply in the market which made a small variation to return uh, a price of $100. Uh, and you will see uh, together in details the explication of this uh, volatility in the next uh, course, inshallah. Let's move now. To, uh, you know that this is the flag of our uh, country and the logo. And this is the logo of our national pride uh, OCP group that extract and develop the, the great and natural resources, uh, which is the phosphate. So here I want to give you some um, explication of this, this, uh, this logo. So the OCP logo symbolizes 
a shark teeth. This is a shark teeth. I don't know if you see my uh, my screen. This is a shark teeth, which we call him a lamina oblica. That are a current fossil in Moroccan phosphates. And this figure is reproduced five times, remained in the start of the national flag. And on the other hand, the destinations of our products to the five continents. So the city is in the is an, an, a circle around which are placed two airs loaded in an arc uh, that symbolize the fertility and the growth. So OCP group uh, is uh, uh, OCP groups active mining activity are concentrated in three uh, in three uh, regions uh, of Morocco located in four mine sites in uh, in Khorivga. Khorivga sites we have there. Uh, Sidi Dawi, Marah Al Haraz, Sidi Shinnan, and uh, Bni Amir mines, and three uh, mines in Gintur Basin. We have there Ben Gerir, Bushan, and Ben Zinda mines, and one in Bukra in the south of Morocco. So, the processing activities of phosphate nitrophosphoric acid and phosphate fertilizer are essentially concentrated in, in Jerf Lasfa and, uh, and, uh, and Safi. So let's move now to uh, to present to you some geological story or sorry, overview of, of, of the story of geology at OCP because I work on that for something like 13, uh, 13 years. So uh, the geological research of phosphates is divided on three main phases. The first one is the discovery of phosphates between 1905 and 1921. In 1980, so we had a discovery of the first target of phosphate in Chishawa in the in, in region by uh, George Swift, so-called Briggs. And this is uh, his, uh, his, uh, <coughs> his presentation of his mom during the, their, their, their travel in Morocco between 1901 and 1907. And in 1917, we have a discovery of the large phosphate basin of Ula Dabun, where we have Khrid sites. So the second part is exploration and mining of uh, phosphate deposit. It was between 1921 and 1955, where we had the exploration of area of outcrops of phosphate layers in Moroccan base. And in 1921, we have the first mining operation in Wadzam or in Bujniba, this is in Khribga site, with the first train of the phosphate to the port of Casablanca. In uh, 1951, we have the first mining operation in Yosofia. And in 1951, we have the open pit extraction in Sidi, in, in Sidi Dawi because before that we had just the underground mining of phosphates. And then we did some stratigraphic position of the main phosphates formation. So we did some studies in lithologic, lithologic correlation between the main, uh, main or big uh, basins in Morocco, Led Abdun and Gintur, and uh, we uh, published some a memorial devoted to paleontological vertebrates and invertebrates by Aram Bor. The last phase is the systematic geologic exploration, which starts since 1956, and where we had the geological studies of deposits to meet the requirements of the mining operations, and the systematic geological exploration throughout uh, the four main basins of the basins of phosphates. Uh, and we have also the evolution of chemical analysis protocol because in the beginning, the quality of the phosphates has, has defined, it, defined it by two elements, two chemical elements, and currently we have more than 10 elements to define the quality of the phosphates. And we have also the realization of the sedimentological, geochemical, hydrogeologic, geological, and some uh, geophysical and paleontological studies. And we started the digital transformation of geology activities since 2007. So let's move now to see the, the location of the, the different different uh, basins. So the Moroccan phosphates were deposited between 40 and 70 million years ago. So geologically speaking, between the Maastrichtian, so between Maastrichtian and Lutetian age, it took some uh, 30 million years plus undermines uh, 5 million years to, pro to form this great precious. So these deposits are mainly located in four basins in the in the Atlas in the Atlas area. Here we find the Ouled Abdul. Okay, here we have Ouled Abdul, Ouled Abdul Basin with the Khrid Gasites and the Gintur 
the basin with the Eusophia and Wilgray sites. And then in the Atlas, we have here Mescala, Mescala Basin. And in the south of Morocco, we have here Ouled Abdul, what we call, and we call this basin what they have, okay? So I know that in addition to this uh, four basins, we have other deposits, but lesser economic importance, lesser economic importance. We find them in the region of Fez, Wazazer, Sous, and Emishil. What, why I say that in Emishil, is not, it's not known uh, by the season of marriage, but also by, by the existence of this kind of, uh, of phosphates. This is the appetite. So you should know that uh, we, we have other deposits, but of less importance, and we have not yet studied, and also Pijori still, still ha has a lot of work to, to do in this, uh, in this area. So let's move now to uh, some details of different, uh, different uh, basins. We will start by the first one, Dula Dabdul, which has the area from 10,000 kilometers square with the 50% exploited and studied area. It is, most, it is the most important deposit where we make the largest production of the phosphates in Morocco. It is limited in the north uh, by the massive so so central Morocco and in the south by the plain of Bnei'mer, in, uh, in the east by the Paleozoic massive or Hamna, and in the west by the high atlas of Nimilla. The area indicated by the color, the, the brown color are already exploited and in gray are being exploited. Uh, the hatched uh, area indicate the future and the, the, and, uh, uh, the future area that uh, we have not yet geologically explored. Uh, you can see that since to, uh, 1920, we have not even exploited 10% of the total surface of the, the basin and the 47% correspond only uh, to the white part. So the figure, sh the figure shows uh, the, uh, the synthetic stratigraphic log of the uh, Oled Abdon Basin. The phosphate series is uh, composed of alternative phosphates and non-phosphate layers, which we call series and or antiverdin. In the maestration, we have uh, here the layer three, couche trois, layer three to the, the most important in the Khrizga uh, sites in terms of quantity. In the Danian and the Panician uh, age, we find the layer two. Uh, in, in the Eprisian, we find the most interesting layer on the plant. Uh, qual qualitative and uh, quantitative, it is the layer one or push in. In addition to layer one, we find the level uh, and seams, but with the less importance, uh, like layer zero and seam A and seam B. Uh, the wall series is covered by a dolomitic limestone layer, which allows uh, the protection of a large part of the area we are uh, currently exploited. I note that the naming of layers here that is very specific for each site, but the geological classification is universal. Uh, we will see later that the naming is different in in other in, in other in other basins. So we are just I show you the maestration. As, and uh, as you can see, the layer is not 100% phosphated, but we have uh, an, alter an, alterna an, an, an alternation of uh, phosphates and other non-phosphate layers. Uh, as you can see uh, on the picture, the, the thick exceed the 10 meter. So in this picture, we, uh, we have uh, the continuation of the phosphate series with layer two and layer one in the region, uh, in the area of the Gar Chajar located in the west of the Khrizga city. Uh, here it is the east-west correlation section, which, which uh, shows the thickness evolution of the phosphate layers. We have a reduction of, in thickness going from the west toward the east generally, and uh, this evolution is accompanied by an increase in the guide of P2O5. This correlation is justified, but that we cannot generalize it. Yet. So uh, we're going now to, to, to move uh, to the second basin, which is the basin of Gentu, located at the southwest of the, the basin of Kola So it is, it is a basin that ex extends over the 120 kilometers in length and 20, uh, 25 to 30 kilometers in width. It is, it is divided into six deposits or mines. 
going from the west to the east, we can find the following deposits Yusufia, uh, Bushan, or uh, Luta, Ben Greer, Nzalat Harasha, and uh, the south. It is limited to the north by the Paleozoic Massif of Rahamna, to the south by Jurassic Hills of Misa, uh, to, the, to the south by, by Jbilat, to the west we have the Jurassic Hills of Misat, and to the east we have the Tassau River. So this is the stratigraphic log uh, that shows the different layers identified in this basin. And as, uh, as you can see, uh, you can notice the number is bigger than Khrizgaz, than Khrizgaz one. So looking at the evolution of the, the powers of, of the thickness with the, the, the contents, we notice that the same remarks, the layers are thinning toward the haste with the increase of uh, uh, in, in P205 uh, grad, but the remark is not general because we make uh, the case of seam E2 here. Uh, we can have here the he is has a big uh, thin th thick, but the but the, the, the grad of P205 is very light, very very uh, very low, and here we have the thickness which uh, increased with the increasing of the the uh, the grad of P205. So here I show some uh, picture or or we can find where we can find the what we call in the landmark landmark layer. This is uh, this is a, a Mark Lai, Marley Clay uh, layer, and you with the, the, his uh, yellow uh, color, which is very specific and what we can find in all in all the, of the in in in, in, the, in the basin. And this, this is the, the landmark layer. And we have here the uh, the phosphates layer two and the layer three. So here we have the, the the continuity of the different layers. Where you can find here the layer one, which is the more important layer in uh, in Gintu. And here we have the layer one, two. This is just to show you the different layers and the color, the aspect, geological aspects of the different uh, seams and layers that we can find in this basin. So let's move now to, in the, to the third one, which we call in Mescala Basin. This basin is located at the foot of the High Atlas in the triangle of Suera, Suera, Shishawa, and Unitanu. It is composed of three deposits, Ulad Gusba, Khmis Mescala, and Unitanu. It, it, it is the basin where we discovered uh, for the first time the phosphates. And it is geologically recognized at 100% and 100%, but the operation has not uh, yet started. So uh, here we have uh, almost the same stratigraphic division at the, the Gentour Basin with the famous layer of uh, dolomitic limestone, which covered the, uh, the, the phosphates. And what we can find it here in the fusion age. And here we have the different age with the phosphates layers. Now here we have the layer one with the, some perturbation, which is very characteristic in this uh, this layer. Uh, and here we have some some small uh, small layers of phosphates, which I call the uh, satellite phosphates here in uh, a prison in Italy. And let's move now to the south of Morocco, uh, uh, where we have where where we have the the the, the what the head basin. Uh, and it is the, the, the smallest basin where the phosphates mining take place uh, at exactly Bokras deposits. And it's divided in nine parts of current and the, of currently the mining operations. We have currently the mining operations uh, and, and the, the operations are located in the north and in the south of, uh, of the, uh, the mine. So the notification of the phosphate series is similar than Frieza. Uh, and the particularity of this basin is that the phosphates are very silicious and rich in chlorine, chlorine, and the phosphates are covered by a layer of silica instead the limestone cave Hamada here in the Bukrasa. So the evolution this time is from the north to the south, going from the south to the north. The phosphate series develops with the increase in the thickness uh, of the layers and the appearance of new layers, like for example here, layer two, and the development of layer three when we go into the north. So here, the, this photo shows the uh, operating front of, the, of an area of the Bukra mine. 
uh, when we find the here the, the richest and the most important layer, which we call in layer one, which was shown, where, where we started the mining since 1978. So, uh, so for the mineralogy point of view uh, of, of uh, Moroccan phosphate, uh, so with the main constituent is apatite with this formula, and the associate uh, minerals, we can find the, the carbonite. So in here we can find the dolomite and calcite, the silica represented by the quartz and opal, the clay, which is represented by monmorionite and apapagite, and the evaporites, but it's very rare to identify. Don't we have there uh, gypsum and uh, some highlights? So for the petrography point of view uh, of Moroccan phosphates, those so the figurative elements we have, we already see that we have there the uh, the grains and the bioclast. The cyanide generally, this is a carbonate or clay and cellulose. And we can find also other constituents. So like uh, chloride of sodium and organic matter, which can help us to, uh, to define the light and the dark phases, uh, especially phosphates. So for the geochemistry ge ge point of view, so we have the major element, elements, which are the P, uh, calcium, fluorite, magnesium, uh, magnesium, silis, and uh, and chlor, and so on. And for the trace element, we can find some chromium, uh, lead, vanadium, thorium, and uh, some uh, rare earth. So now, let's, let's, now we'll go to to see how we explore this uh, this huge this huge uh, deposit. So the first step is the data collection. So the systematic geological exploration of the deposit is it's done by three kinds of uh, of um, of manners. So let's the first one is wells with the diameter of uh, 0.88 and 1.2 uh, in the shallow phosphate zones. The second it's mechanical core drilling with a diameter of uh, point uh, uh, of 0 0.13 and 0 0.16 uh, in deep and submerged layers. And we have also the trenches outcrops. So let's see some photo for that for, for this uh, this this um, this methods used in the exploration. And we have wells, as we can see here. Uh, and there, the the geologists who uh, who decided into this well to describe the lithology and to get the sample. And we can also use the the core drilling, as you can see here, and the trenches. And there, this is the, the, the gentleman, it's me, but the trench is behind me. And you can see also the, uh, the, the vehicles and the cars that you're using in the, in the field. So the second, the second step is geological logging uh, and the identification of layer after, after, after the description in the field. So we draw this, this geological section, as, as, as you can see the different color that indicate the layers. And here we have the results of the chemical analysis and description in this part. All of this data are entering in the, 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 the data, database or geological information system where we enter in this data. And we have already developed this, uh, this database uh, on Oracle to have this interactive uh, actual geological section with the software, what we call the GDM. GDM, this is a geological data management, which is uh, developed by BRGM in France. So by that, by the same software, we can use uh, some new approach like geostatistics to have uh, uh, a good analysis uh, of data. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the interpretation of this data can uh, help us to draw what we call an ISO value maps our block maps that is used by the operating mining guys to, to in the planification of the extraction. And also we can draw this correlation check section, okay, the in, in 2D, and also we can draw the 3D presentation of different, uh, different deposits. And uh, I will show you here uh, 3D model that I, uh, I built in 2011, and this is, uh, this is the, the 3D model of um, Zinda deposit. As we can see here in blue, this is the, the limits of the, uh, the, the deposits. And in the white color, this is the, the boundaries of the panels. 
And we can see also the, the description of the different wells located in this mine. And the, the gray color, this is non-phosphate, and the other color, this is a phosphate layers. Okay. We'll try now to show you the uh, the the top and uh, the floor of different layers. So here, for example, we have layer six, layer five, and layer four, layer, layer two. As you can see here, and after. At the end, we have the topography to cover all the layers. And as you can see, this is the interpretation what we we done in the site. And uh, here we have this is this is updated model. This zone are already extracted. And as you can see, we have a good correlation between what we are interpreted in the geology part and what we have in the reality. So let's move now to my uh, last parts of, of my talk. Uh, this, this is the international standards of resources and reserves, which is man led, actually, led and managed actually by two organi international organisms. We have CRIUSCO and UNFC. The CRIUSCO means the Committee of Mineral Reserves International Reporting Standards. And the UNFC, which means the United Nations Framework Classification. And under the umbrella of this group, we have something like 11 uh, standards. The, and this, this standards, they help the, the, the um, they have the investor to, to bring uh, the fund for their mining projects. And uh, uh, in the world, we have uh, in Africa, in Africa, especially, we have just one sonder in South Africa, which we call in Samrex. If not, we have also in Europe, in Russia, in Canada, in E40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and ECME in USA and in Brazil. And recently in Turkish, Turkish, we have uh, the Turkey IMREC. This is a new standard which is uh, uh, attached to Greece. And we try in, in Morocco, we're discussing currently uh, to see with the colleagues in the ministry how we can also develop our own standard. So let's move now to the, my last uh, slide. It's the resource, resources and reserves definition. I don't know if we can uh, we can give me the definition of the resource because it's very important. Are there any volunteer for that? Mineral resource. No one. Okay. So the mineral resource is a concentration or occurrence of solid material, material of economic interest in or, in or on the earth's crust uh, in each form, so grad or quality, and the quantity that there are reasonable prospects, prospects for eventual economic extraction, the location, quantity, grad, or quality, continuity, and other geological, geological characteristics of a mineral resource are now estimated or interpreted from specific geological evidence and knowledge including sampling, mineral resources are subdivided in order to of increasing geological competence into three, three, uh, three uh, classes, inferred, indicated, and measured, measured category. And the reserves is the economically minimal part of measured and indicated mineral resources. This is a standard, standard definition that we have to, uh, to know. It includes <coughs> deleting materials and, uh, and uh, allowance for loss, which, uh, which, may, which may occur when the, the material is mined or extracted and is defined by studies at pre-feasibility or feasibility level. Uh, because we have already the, uh, the conceptual study when we have to study it, the resources. And such, su such studies demonstrated that at the time of, uh, of reporting extraction could reasonably be statistical. So I can uh, present this, this like, like this shape. So we have the resources and, the, and, the, uh, and we have a reserve, which is a part of a resources. And this is a standard classification of, uh, of, uh, of the different category of 
the resources and the results. So my, my talk uh, is finished and thank you very much for your, uh, for you and for my colleague uh, Salim Adin Nawi. The floor is yours, Dr. Salim or Dr. Nawi. Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Yusuf uh, Dhaif, uh, for your, uh, uh, of course, uh, wonderful uh, lecture. And it has a lot of information that uh, uh, maybe most of us uh, who attend here, uh, they want to gain uh, uh, more uh, knowledge and information. For that, maybe they are silent. Uh, but anyhow, uh, sometimes it happens like that. We need uh, to listen. We need uh, to be careful about what we are going to say. And we let the uh, lecturer uh, to explain all the things. Uh, I think also you provide us with uh, a video. Uh, I think if, if it is possible that we uh, put it now also, so just maybe it can uh, clarify some of the information also. Uh, let yeah. me uh, share it, please. Okay, it is there. It's about the UM6P uh, 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 vision uh, short. So let me go for it, share screen. And close the, okay. Let me rise the sound, maybe it can be better also. Yes. Let's go on. In 2017, a new research and innovation university was inaugurated here in Morocco. Designed from the outset to be an ecosystem for innovation, research, and entrepreneurship. The first of its kind to be built in Africa. A next generation university with five founding principles. Promoting research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Developing skills and knowledge. Bringing forth a new generation of competent leaders. Developing sustainable partnerships. Sharing the values of social responsibility and sustainable development. Attracting many of the best minds from Africa and across the world to its main campus here in Ben Guir, 50 kilometers from Marrakesh. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University has a forward-looking approach to research and education, fully focused on innovation, experimentation, and the pursuit of excellence, with an ethos of learning by doing. PhD students and professors work together as part of a unique entrepreneurial culture, developing pertinent research projects critical to helping Africa realize its potential with experimentation at the heart of education, starting research in small laboratories before scaling up to full-size experimentation in our living labs. the experimental farms to test new methods in agriculture and fertilization. Making ideas grow and incubate in the innovation and entrepreneurship platform with a network of mentors, coaches, and numerous scale-up opportunities. Tackling the challenges of education in Africa is a core principle of the university by being close to policymakers while being anchored in academic analysis and knowledge. The university focuses on bringing concrete answers to the population's needs. The Digital Learning Lab develops digital modes of education, including massive open online courses, widening the reach of education and knowledge. The university aims to bring forth a new generation of environmentally conscious, competent leaders, offering scholarships to the best students from remote areas, being socially inclusive, giving a chance to everybody to succeed. 
The university is connected to a global network of academic and research institutions, while also developing partnerships with public institutions and industry, collaborating in R&D, continuous education, and knowledge transfer. Revitalizing agriculture in Africa is a challenge not only for the people of Africa, but for the people of an ever-growing world. By bringing humanities and technology sciences to the continent, and by educating the next generation of competent leaders, Mohammed VI Polytechnic University brings a solid contribution to Africa's sustainable development. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University, nurturing today's talent, impacting tomorrow's Africa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, have uh, any comments uh, that you want to, uh, to, so I, to give? If you allowed me, uh, I can present a little bit in Arabic, uh, like I did every time. The... Okay, go ahead, uh, Professor Ahmed. Okay. Thank you. Do you see my slide? Yes, it is. Okay. okay. So, uh, I will thank Sayyid Salim from Jadid, because he is always with us and takes everything from us. And he shows everything on everything. I thank him very much for all of you, from the seven of you, from the country. البحرين البحرين <تصفيق> الأستاذ يوسف دافي أشكركم جزيل الشكر أنتم أستاذ بجامعة محمد السادس بوليتكنيك والآن نظرنا إلى لمحة عن بوليتكنيك تحدثتم عن الآفاق الحالية والمستقبلية لتقنية النانو في أداء أنظمة الطاقة الشمسية آه عفوا كتبت يعني عنوان آخر أنا آسف سأخذ ال أعطوني one second please now I'm in تحدثتم عن ال كل ما هو يعني له علاقة بالجيولوجيا في المغرب وقناعتي بالنسبة إلينا في الـ الـ Virtual Learning University هو أن الدورات الأكاديمية من الدورات الأكاديمية الأساسية للجامعة التركيز على الدراسات الجيولوجية والجيوكيميائية والجيوفيزيائية والاستكشاف أو الاستكشافات الجيولوجية واستعمال علوم الحاسوب لتطوير الخرائط الجيولوجية وأنتم قد تحدثتم قد استعملتم بدون شك الحاسوب لتطوير الخرائط الجيولوجية وتطوير العلوم والتقنيات لتحديد موقع الموارد الطبيعية والخامات وكميتها وكيف سيتم استثمارها هذه الطروات الطبيعية من معادن ذات قيمة صناعية واقتصادية عن طريق التصنيع ابتداء من المواد الخام أو المواد الأولية وتحويلها إلى منتوجات نهائية قابلة للتسويق ذات القيمة المضافة الخاصة وبطريقة مستدامة تحترم البيئة مع الأخذ في الاعتبار على محمل الجد للحصول على خبرة دقيقة متاحة لصناعة لصناع القرار السياسي وليتم دمجها في خطة مستقبل بلادنا لخلق الثروة وفرص الشغل. هذا هو الأساس في نظري. نحن محظوظون بوجودكم السيد يوسف من جامعة محمد السادس بوليتكنيك ومسؤول في مكتب نقل التكنولوجيا 
مهندس جيولوجي تخرج من المدرسة الوطنية العليا للمناجم بالرباط ماجستير من جامعة القاضي عياد في علم المعادن شهادة كلية كولورادو للمناجم لتعدين الفوسفات ماجستير من أرقى المدارس الكبرى في باريس في الجغرافيا السياسية والاقتصادية لإفريقيا الناشئة له اهتمام طويل الأمد وخبرات فنية متنوعة في قطاع التعدين أشكركم جزيل الشكر ومن طبيعة الحال سأعطي الكلمة للسيد سالم حتى يتيح للحضور يعني الافتراضي الفرصة لكي يضعوا أسئلتهم وشكرا لكم شكرا بروفيسور أحمد الآن نفتح باب الأسئلة والمداخلات uh, Any questions uh, or comments that you want to, to add uh, Please, the floor it is open for everybody uh, بالإمكان برفع الأيدي by raising your hands or you can write in the chat your questions and we are waiting for, for you Yes, uh, Professor uh, Ahmed Rasili, uh, please. I need, yeah, okay, exactly yes. now. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, okay. Professor Davi, I was a little bit late to attend your, 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 your presentation from the beginning. I had another meeting, so I'm happy to be here. Uh, that li I listened to your conclusion and the last, uh, last, last minutes of your presentation. Just would like to, to mention that I was born in Boulanoir. I don't know if Boulanoir means something for you. Yes. It was the first first phosphate mine in Morocco. It was it start it start being exploited on on uh, 1923, and I was born just front of this. Not in 1923. I was born in, in, in later on. Etc. But but just in front of this first mine that that was was opened in Morocco. I just I just one one small question. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I also like your your the, your last slide with with the definition of resources, mineral resources and ore resources. And I will I will I will I will copy this from you just to illustrate. I will I will treat resources in my presentation on the next Tuesday. I will speak about resources and the scarcity of resources, and resources are not limited. So uh, yeah, definitely the ore and the mineral resources are, has, have a limit. The quantities are limited, are well known within the earth. And we need definitely to, 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 to manage this, 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 this kind of resources for the future generation. Do you have, do, can you please just tell us, I don't know if you mentioned it already in your presentation, what is this, the, 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 the still available as, as, as a resources in, in terms of phosphate in Morocco? Uh, yes, I, I already said that uh, currently the USGS the United States Geological Survey has talked about something like uh, 15 billion ton. This is a resources, uh, resources. Resources, yes, not, not, not the ore. It's why I gave this, 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 this definition of resources and reserves. Yeah. So in terms of the resources, we have 15, 15 uh, billion tons. And uh, uh, since, to, since 1920 uh, until now, I think that's what extracts like something like less than 10 percent yeah it's a very huge uh, very yeah, yeah. Huge base and very, very huge difference and uh, say uh, it's uh, we have a, we have still a lot uh, phosphate in morocco yeah but it's becoming difficult to extract phosphate because we used to have the say near 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 surface uh, and the, the deepest one it's it's uh, that's it it's not there's only yes, one yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, there are many layers uh, it's become difficult, yes, but we don't forget that we have also the university which is here to uh, to bring the, the the new technology to extract efficiently efficiently this this resources. Yeah. So yes, the, it's difficult because we have a high uh, recovery of the uh, the, the, the this uh, this uh, this uh, this phosphates, but mm. we develop in parallel the technologies. In my, the many technologies to use in the extraction of these resources. Thank you so much and congratulations for the night. Thank you. Th thank you, Professor uh, Ahmed Rasili. Uh, yeah, any other uh, questions or comments, please? Okay, Prof. Ahmed, you want to say something? Yes, yes. 
uh, I want to, you know, I know that uh, Morocco has his own satellite. Uh, I don't know the name, it's like Mohammed C's satellite or something like this. Anyway, Mohammed, yes. Mohammed. yes. And the, did the, do you is it the, use it to explore the the uh, remining or the the, the mines in Morocco or uh, or in in general? How, how do you what are the tools you have to work to explore the 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 mines in Morocco? So yes, Victor, now it's a very important question because currently we talk about the remote sensing and the remote sensing we use. The, the image satellite Im images to, uh, to in the beginning of the, 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 ex the geological exploration what we call in the green fields to detect and delimit the what we call an anomaly so, so the, the the zone when we have the high con concentration of the, the elements and we use this uh, this image and we analyze this image to define and delimit delimit these zones Yes, we use it. We use it a lot, a lot, this the, the, the satellite uh, data. And when the satellites get more, more the, 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 the precision is higher in the, in, the, in the image, more the information is precise and we have a, a good information to use uh, to decide, decide in, 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 uh, if, if the zones can contain a good a, a mine or not. So yes, we use it, yeah. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, which is a uh, little bit political. Uh, we, I know that we, we have a lot of mineral, a lot of mines in Morocco, phosphate is one of the big one. Uh, do we have any industry which move from raw material, but a Moroccan industry, of course, I'm talking, to, to, make a, to give a value of this mine, anyone? or we just sell our uh, patrimony, our uh, resources, just a raw material. Do we have uh, industry? Do we gain uh, well, let's something? Say, uh, let's, let's say that uh, for the phosphates where Morocco extracts the, the huge, the, the, big, the, 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 the big quantity of, uh, of, of mining substances, all of the rocks, so let's say that until 80% of the rocks is uh, transformed locally in Safi and Jaffasfar, and we transform the phosphate rock to the acid, phosphoric acid, and the, the fertilizers. So here we have this uh, added value that we, we gave on our raw materials. But for, for the, the other elements, yes, we don't uh, we don't have any uh, any uh, industry to uh, transform this, uh, this this metals, and we export the the the, the raw the, the raw material directly. Okay. Really few, few uh, quantity which is used in local. Well, uh, another, uh, there are many questions in this area. For example, uh, in the phosphate, do we have some uh, rare uh, element which are used in, in electronic and which is uh, extremely important? Do we have some, how much is a PPM or Microgram and uh, do we uh, do we have method to extract it? This, uh, so one the the rear earth we have it we have it, the heavy uh, rear earth in phosphates and so we did a lot of analysis on our uh, on different layers and we have these elements. But until until now, uh, I I think that's the colleague at the university they work on the the uses and extraction of this rare element and uh, if if one of the the colleagues here in the VLU has the technology to help us to uh, extract and evaluate these elements. He will uh, he will come with us. Yes, we, we work in uh, still on this technology. You spoke about rear elements or rear earths. Rear earth elements. No, rear earth. I talk okay. about rear earth. Uh, the, the 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 one you find in in iPhone, in uh, yeah. in some very specific. Uh, uh, compound in uh, devices. Yeah. You know what? We have all the elements in the PDF table are present in the phosphate ore. All the elements. Okay. Thank you, Professor Ahmed. Uh, 
let's uh, see if there, there's any, any other uh, questions. Okay, in the, yes, uh, we have Prof. Uh, uh, I cannot, Mucho uh, Zoraya. Al <laughs> Mucho Soraya. Al Mucho Okay, uh, please. Uh, uh, you can uh, start. Uh, hello, hello to uh, hello everyone. Hello. Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my name is Soraya Al Mucho. I have my master's degree from M6P in field of uh, chemical science and valorization of natural phosphate. Uh, first of all, I will, th I will thank you uh, uh, very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dafi Yusuf, for this great presentation, and also uh, professors uh, uh, Mr. Nawi and Mr. Sel for this uh, e-learning university. My my question is about uh, the black phosphorus. Uh, do we uh, do we extract it uh, here from uh, in Morocco? And which process we use to extract it? It is uh, the same process for the the white phos uh, phos uh, phosphate. Okay. okay. So for the, the dark or light phosphates, it's what we call it. So we call it light and dark. It's depend of the grade of uh, carbon, organic carbon, but it has the same geological criteria. So it's the same, the same layer. It's just in the dark layer, we have more a conservation of organic matter, why the color is dark. And the light one, there we have the, with the oxidation, so we have the uh, departure of the, the organic carbon. This is the difference. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rayo. Uh, any other questions, please? Okay. I think uh, if there is no uh, any other questions, uh, you can uh, give us, a, uh, you can conclude your uh, lecture. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Yusuf, uh, what you want to say at the end? So uh, I would like to, to thank all the attendee, uh, attendees for the time, and I hope uh, see them for my next uh, courses with more interactivity because it's very interesting for me. So uh, thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much, Professor Nawi, Mr. Salim, and uh, the colleagues and friends of ALU. And uh, see you maybe the next uh, next season for my uh, lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I think, I think there is a question from Abdel Wahid Shari. Okay, great. Thank you. Abdel Wahid, okay. Uh, please, Abdel Wahid, he wants to talk straight. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it is uh, open. You can, uh, the mic it is open. You can uh, have your question, please, or comments. Uh, thank you so much. I have just a comment to Professor and my friend uh, Yusuf Tafi. I would like to thank you a lot for this uh, talk, and uh, uh, I hope you all the best in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. وصلنا الختام. الكلمة لك Professor Ahmed. Please welcome. Thank you very much. I will come back to this uh, before we miss some few things that I, I was a little bit uh, not very. So uh, first of all, I want to correct before what I say is that uh, in Arabic, uh, we are talking about Rawasib al-Fosfat al-Maghribiya al-Takween wa Tariqat al-Istikshaf. That's what uh, I missed. That's one thing. The second thing that uh, I think uh, uh, Ustad Salim, he says that many times that we have now a web page, what you see here in the front of you. Uh, I will use the laser here to show it. So you are, we have a web page, so you can go on and then you can also uh, chat with us in Instagram. So you have, if you have Instagram you, yourself, you can, uh, you can, we are on Instagram and you can see a lot of things in Instagram, YouTube, 
All our uh, material will be uh, broadcasted on YouTube. Uh, our email address, if you want to uh, to uh, co to contact us, and anyway, in the through the web page, after some weeks, will be completely ready to to chat with us, to talk to uh, expert, etc. So please, uh, that's the the philosophy of virtual learning university is to stay together in in contact and the, the student can contact the professor and vice vice versa so and uh, i want to thank uh, uh, professor Daffy uh, for this talk and uh, i think uh, if any student want to know about uh, resources in morocco mineral resources and any detail you know we have expert at the virtual learning university. I want also to thank again uh, uh, Ustad Sarim for being always with us, for making everything working uh, good. I know it's hard, but uh, we we are making a lot of progress. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, uh, Prof. Uh, Ahmed. So, and we'll inshallah uh, meet you in the uh, next lecture. Uh, which is uh, going to be uh, tomorrow. Uh, do uh, can you present uh, the information for the? Uh, I have to find it in my file, or, or if okay. you have it, you can also show. Okay, uh, let me also check. Uh, okay. Or... Yes. For day uh, six, you can go ahead uh, with it, uh, Professor Ahmed. That is- uh, We'll have it. Yes, you can go ahead. We'll, yes, okay, so uh, it will be uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Jawad al Kharraz. He's actually uh, uh, executive director in, uh, in, uh, in the, in the uh, regional center for renewable energy in in Egypt, he's Moroccan, and he just uh, got a, a very huge job in, in, in the regional center, and he will talk about sustainable desalination technology. So he's a, an expert on uh, so, uh, the desalination of water, of seawater, and uh, also other kind of water, uh, and he he will so. He will talk about this topic. It's a very important topic for Morocco, for the Middle East, for Africa. So uh, try to be with us and uh, we, he, I'm sure he, he will give you a lot of information. So I will, of course, we will make it on the, on the Facebook and everywhere that you can see. And the link to the, to the conference is always the same, I guess. So okay. thank you very much. So thank you. Uh, see you uh, tomorrow at 2 uh, p.m. Moroccan time. Thank you very Masa. much. Thank you. Masalam. Thanks all of you. Salam. Masalam.